and please send many more of those nieces and nephews to Morgan. Uh, I'm really going to be extremely brief uh, and bring my remarks in within five minutes, but first of all, I do want to say to Madam Ambassador, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving what I consider to be the most succinct yet comprehensive history of Africa that I have heard. Uh, and so, um, I did write on my notepad here, invite the ambassador to speak at Morgan. <laughs> my students need to hear you, and I hope that you will honor us with your presence on our campus. Um, I, I really want to also thank the other organizers, uh, Kabina, uh, uh, for um, putting on this HBCU Africa homecoming. I think it is a very innovative concept, uh, and we at Morgan are looking forward you know, to understanding it more uh, and seeing ways in which we can participate. Uh, I want to make four major points with my brief remarks. Uh, the first is that uh, in 1987, as I walked across the stage at Harvard and received my fourth college degree, two of them from that institution, I realized that I was the most uneducated and undereducated person in the United States. Because even though I had four college degrees, I had never set foot outside of the United States. And so I realized that I needed to do something about that. I applied for an international leadership development program at the time that was operated by the Kellogg Foundation. And the Kellogg Foundation selected oh, um, about 35 up and coming leaders between the ages of 25 and 40, and for a three year period, enabled us to go all over the world to study leadership and history. I was selected for some reason, uh, and I started my trek. And my first major trip was to Africa, and I spent about two months there initially. And I was quite bold with two or three other people in the class. Uh, we wrote ahead of time and asked for an audience with Mr. Julius Neary, Mr. Nelson Mandela, Mr. Oliver Tambo, Mr. Walter Sisulu, actually with Mr. Moy from Kenya, uh, with uh, Mr. Nioma from Namibia, uh, with Robert Mugabe, and with Mr. Moy from Kenya. And all of them gave us an audience. And it was the most amazing transformational experiences. And what I realized, particularly in my initial conversation with Mr. Julius Neary, he invited us to his lake home there uh, on uh, Lake uh, uh, Tanzanica uh, in, in, Arusha, uh, in Arusha. And we were there for about three hours, literally, literally at his feet. He was in a rocking chair, and we sat on the porch at his feet. And I pulled out my legal pad, and I took all these notes. I was just so unbelievably moved and impressed by the perspective that he imbued in me. To make a long story short, uh, I had always said that uh, if I had a son, that I wanted him to have the characteristics of my father, but I did not want him to carry my father's name. And I saw in Mr. Neary all of those characteristics, and I asked him uh, if I could name my son after him, and he graciously agreed, and so my son's name is Neary. And and, and, and that began to establish for me a foundation that was void in my educational preparation. And so from that point, I went all over Africa. I spent some incredible time from the northern part, Egypt, and all, all the countries there, all the way to South Africa. Indeed, I've been in South Africa about 15 times. That's the first piece is that I have really sought to educate myself 
So, Madam Ambassador, that as a leader, as I was coming up and occupying these spaces, I would never, ever, ever be hoodwinked. I would have the context now to make decisions uh, and to, if you will, dismiss uh, someone else's biases and predilections. Second, we at Morgan have been paying a lot of attention to how we engage Africa now in a very substantive way. And let me just share with you some of the things that we have done and just a couple of things that we are doing. Uh, first of all, yes, we are one of the leaders in the United States in the production of African-American engineers. Uh, we are number five in the United States in the production of African-American engineers in all fields. We're number one in electrical, number one in civil, and number one in industrial. But what we realized was that there was an opportunity to work with the deans of engineering schools throughout the African continent and to bring them together in a collective. And so my associate dean of the College of Engineering in Morgan has been working now to officially organize the organization of engineering deans in Africa. So we can basically work with those universities to ensure that the kind of production that we are seeing here in the United States coming out of HBCUs can also come out of the African universities as well. Uh, second, uh, second um, we are exploring, and let me underscore exploring, uh, whether there are opportunities for Morgan to collaborate in a meaningful way, including the possibility of having a campus in Africa. Uh, and we were invited by uh, the president of Nigeria uh, to come and take a look at three possible sites there. I sent um, a team of emissaries from Morgan to take a look at a possible site in Abuja, uh, as uh, well as two other places uh, in Nigeria, uh, and we are still in the process of looking at that, if you will, because there's a lot involved, but uh, we have made the first step. We've taken them up on the invitation, and we have started to do the research in terms of whether that is a possibility. Um, and then uh, we uh, also um, taking advantage of opportunities to go and uh, to speak at institutions all over the country, and so I've been invited in uh, August to be the keynote speaker at the Open University of Nigeria. Uh, for their annual piece there, and we are taking advantage of those opportunities as well. And last, uh, as I looked at what could be some additional emerging opportunities for um, uh, the uh, HBCU Africa Homecoming Initiative and Morgan, I saw several, but one is in blockchain, cryptocurrency, um, and fintech. Uh, we just received a $2 million grant. Um, beca became the only HBCU in which actually it's been funded in this space uh, to build at Morgan a center uh, in FinTech. We just opened it, and the purpose of that is to make sure that any HBCU in the country that wanted to develop uh, curricular expertise around that uh, could actually uh, work with Morgan uh, to enable that to happen. And so I see no reason why we could not extend that, if you will, to the continent as well. And so we look forward to that. And then last, um, we unroll, uh, actually unveiled an initiative at Morgan last year where every single student going forward before he or she will graduate from the institution will have to have had an experience in one of four areas. One, they must have had either a study abroad experience, uh, an internship experience, uh, an experience working with a faculty member in a research setting, or an experience learning experience. Uh, 
And so uh, with that in mind, uh, we see opportunities for study abroad um, because uh, I partnered with, or we have partnered, I should say, uh, with the Department of State. Uh, we come bring to our campus every year uh, passport machines, uh, and students actually can get their passports um, in a matter of two hours. Uh, and uh, I provide um, the support uh, for them to do that because many of them don't have the money. Uh, but uh, we are promoting in a very rigorous way, in a vigorous way, the study abroad experiences. So a platform like this, because we have to go through all kinds of organizations in order to arrange that with the right universities. Uh, how do we do the tuition exchange piece? And so there is a common platform that we can use in order to get more of our students from HBCU studying in Africa, that would be Nirvana. So once again, congratulations to all of you, and we look forward to participating.
So that defines the framework for our path forward. Starting with this launch today and the first HBCU Africa homecoming in Ghana, August 1st through the 10th.